Hey van friends, let's talk about plumbing a shower and drains to an undermounted gray water tank. This part of a van build process is one of my least favorites and I try to get it out of the way early in the process. Uh, and I reflect on my first van build and how much I struggled with just trying to figure out how to do drains. So hopefully this video can help others who are a little bit plumbing challenged like me. Finding a grade tank to fit under a ProMaster van that holds enough water for a conversion with a shower but doesn't destroy your ground clearance is a headache and installing it with custom brackets, mounting hardware, is a pain in the tukas. We've made this a lot easier for you, ProMaster folks, with our custom molded gray water tank. If you're building out a ProMaster van, it's a real problem solver and time saver. We have another video about that and how to install it that we'll link to from the description. Then there's the actual drain line plumbing. In many cases, where you want to put your shower pan doesn't work with the drain. If you were to drop the drain through the floor where the shower pan has its drain, you'd hit something important under the van, like a support beam or a mechanical part. I remember spending hours at the hardware store looking at plumbing fittings, buying a bucket full of parts that I would take home and try to arrange into something that might work, or sitting on my bucket in the van and basically being overwhelmed. I suck at plumbing, and something as simple as a shower drain was breaking my tiny mind. So fast forward, and I just wrapped up the drains on my fourth build, and they kind of work. So I thought I'd share what I've learned, and maybe learn something from you as well. As I mentioned, we have a totally different video about installing the gray water tank itself, so this one's going to pick up with just the drains. The first thing I do is to build a frame and a support for the shower pan. In this case, it's a Lippert's Component brand pan that's 32 inches long and 24 inches wide. It has a left side drain. The pan has to be lifted up off the floor of the van so the drain can run along the floor to a place that, number one, doesn't hit something important below the floor, and number two, is in an area that's accessible and not where the gray water tank is so that you can route the plumbing. The drain from the shower doesn't go into the top of the tank. Instead, it's going to be plumbed to a one and a one half inch spin welded inlet on the rear side of the tank. I know this seems counterintuitive, but it works just fine and it makes routing and potentially repairing your drains a lot easier. All right, let's have a look at this contraption. This is the drain system that will sit under the shower pan and frame. First of all, all of these plumbing parts and fittings are one and one half inch sized. First is the hep vo trap. This functions much like a P-trap in a home uh, to keep odors from coming into the van from the drains or the tank, but it doesn't need the P part, which makes it a much lower profile. Awesome part and highly recommended. This part of the hep vo trap will thread onto the drain of the shower pan. Next is this female threaded to slip fitting that threads onto the hep vo and then is glued to a short piece of PVC. By the way, that term slip refers to a plumbing fitting that's designed to be glued, where one pipe slips into another. Plumbing is so weird. Then I've glued on a slip T fitting. It's shaped like a T, kind of, to the other end of that little stub of PVC. This is where things get even stranger. From the T here is where the drain starts to split from the vent line. Gray and freshwater tanks need to be vented, so as the tank fills up, air can escape, and as the tank empties, um, you can have air come in. Now, there's a couple of ways I could have vented this tank. I could have added another fitting to the tank itself and then had the vent line go from there, but I've decided to take the simple path and actually split the shower drain into a drain and a vent. This makes it a little bit easier, and also um, I don't have to drill another hole in the floor of the van. I could have taken the vent line all the way to the roof, and this is a common approach that you'll see on many like RVs, like a Class B Winnebago or something along those lines. Another thing that might work for you is to take your vent line up to uh, a safe height about where I transitioned from the rigid PVC to the flexible hose, and then you can actually bend it over, creating a loop that then vents below the floor of the van. Here I've used another little stub of PVC to glue one side of the T-fitting to a 45 degree elbow slip fitting, and then there's some more straight PVC and a second 45 degree fitting to branch this off toward where the vent will be. 
Then there's another bit of PVC here, which ends up with a 90 degree elbow slip fitting, pointing up. We'll come back to what happens there later. Back to the other side of this T fitting, which is the drain part. It has a longish piece of PVC, and then there's a 90 degree elbow pointing down. That's where the shower drain water will go down through a hole in the floor of the van. Okay, let's do one of those magic snapping things. Awesome, it's done. The shower pan assembly has been installed on top of that drain vent contraption. Eventually, of course, the shower walls and structure will be attached to this and other parts of the van. Okay, back to that vent. The 90 degree elbow that was pointing up has a short piece of PVC glued on now, and then a slip to female threaded fitting. Then, a male thread to barb fitting to transition from rigid PVC to this flexible hose, which is often used for draining pools and such. So I'm confident that the height of this rigid to flexible transition is high enough that no matter how full my tank is or how backed up my shower drain might be, there won't be water in this part of the vent line. The flexible hose is then routed around the wheel well, and this 90 degree barb to male threaded fitting is glued in with marine adhesive to a hole on the side of the van. So the threaded part barely sticks out of the hole, and then the barb fitting is where the blue hose for the vent line can attach. I cover the whole thing up with what's called a horseshoe vent. And here we are underneath the van. So that uh, elbow that you saw from above has a tiny piece of PVC glued into it. And then we use one of these slip to female thread fittings here. Then we transition from a male threaded to barb fitting there to connect this sanitation hose. It's a marine sanitation hose, very nice stuff. And then into the tank, into the fitting, we have this uh, same fitting, which is uh, male threading to barb for just this small piece of drain to wrap that up. And then over here is a tank sensor to, to measure the level of water in the tank. We'll talk about that in another video. The sink drain is a lot more straightforward. Generally speaking, it has a lot less flow and I don't plumb in a separate vent. The sink will use a small RV trap like this one, which is then plumbed with three quarter inch rubber heater hose from the outlet of the trap into a one and one half female threaded inlet that comes with a gray water tank on the driver's side front sidewall. Here I use a one and one half inch to three quarter inch reducer bushing and then a three quarter inch barb fitting to accept the three quarter inch hose from the drain. Well, that's all for this video. Hopefully that explanation was helpful to you. As always, there's a lot of ways to approach the same thing in a van build. This is just what's worked for me and my couple of vans. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of van nerd content. We'll be bringing a lot more of it to you in the future. How's my hair? I need the Floby. I like making videos under vans. Snay, I've heard my so you didn't get out.